So for those of you that have forgotten what this run is about, the idea is that I made a mod which turns all of the items into rubbish, with just a few exceptions which I'll show on screen. If you haven't seen the first episode yet, I would definitely recommend doing so as it introduces and goes into more detail about the rules for this challenge. I'll leave a link below. I should start by apologising for taking so long to get this episode out. It's been a pretty busy month with improving the practice tools for DS2 and adding some functionality that's really been missing for quite a long time. If anyone has forgotten where we're up to, I'm going to leave some clips from the previous episode on in the background whilst I explain what's been going on in the DS2 world. Firstly, back in early January, the new moon jump tech was found, and this has opened up a lot of nice new skips for Dark Souls 2. And there's also some not so nice skips, but generally these are superseded by parry walks, so it's not so bad. The tech has been banned from restricted runs, but is allowed in unrestricted. And on the back of this, the first sub 2 hour runs have happened in both Scholar and Vanilla by Fujo and Olski. During that time, Exploit, who is the current Scholar any percent board record holder, finally found a pretty cursed but admittedly viable new branch skip for current patch. This does mean that the slide I had which showed that the minimum amount of items needed to complete the game, which was 3, is now technically down to 2, albeit not really. You can actually complete the game with just a butterfly skirt and the Ashen Mist Heart as you don't now don't need the branch. But that's not really true because you can't actually get the butterfly skirt legitimately without a bonfire aesthetic, which would be your third item. So I'm going to call it about two and a half items needed to complete the game. But nonetheless, it's really cool to see a current patch branch skip is possible after all this time. Overall, I'd say Skeleton Lords was the worst fight of the previous episode. So let's dive into this one and see what fun comes up for episode two. We start this episode continuing to farm souls by whatever means possible in order to get the levels of vigour that we need to survive the pit drop and take the first gutter bonfire. The last thing I was doing was killing the pursuers as they give 6k each, and on the way to the last pursuer I finally acknowledged the utility in killing these hollows. So was born the Bastille farm loop. Honestly, farming these things might be better. They die in like two hits. One hit probably actually. 260 souls apart, I can go kill them all at strayed. It's like a thousand souls in like zero time. After killing the pursuer, we spent a short amount of time here farming up some more levels. I hadn't quite optimized the loop just yet, and we're still running all the way back to the bonfire because there's no homeward bones in this mod, unfortunately. But this did mean I got to learn something new about this room. I guess there's no reason to ever look up in this place during the speedrun. Or maybe it's just something that was added in Scholar. Oh, I actually also didn't know this. I'm not sure I've ever looked up in this room in my life. Is this a Scholar thing? I can't kill it, unfortunately. Farming is complete for now, and we get two more levels of Vigor, which would usually be 40 hit points, but since we're fully hollowed, that's only 20, but hopefully this is enough so that we can finally get down the pit. Unfortunately, I still don't have a lot of HP, so I need to take these drops much more slowly. Right over there? I don't think it's going to be even better, though. Oh, it's a lot better. Poggers, let's go. On the next attempt though, shout outs to Kyle Hunk for coming up with a different way of dropping off the bridge. I honestly didn't think this would really make any difference, but turns out it does. So going forwards, we have a lot more HP going into the final drops. So we had a little mishap on the way down. I didn't realize that these planks could break. I thought it was only the section above the bonfire. But on the second attempt we found a nice little jump to this platform and finally made it down to the gutter bonfire so we can actually make some progression. It's been almost exactly one hour since we last killed Covetous so we can go forwards onto the next boss. 
First off though, we might as well celebrate with a bit of flared by doing Jeff Jump. There's no repercussions at all if we die, so why not? The run through the gutter is exactly the same as the speed run, so no problems here. And at the end, we managed to get our first item of the run, which is the fragrant branch at the start of the gulch. I'm usually not concerned about the rotten in these kind of challenge runs. In fact, I've done other runs in the past with much worse damage than this. Look at that sweet damage, dude. It doesn't stand a chance. The fight is quite slow and it's not a DPS check. There's no real time limit in doing so. Also, anyone who's run any percent current patch in this game will have had extensive experience in this fight at low ADP anyway. So I'm very familiar with all of his hitboxes. I got past the Rotten on the first attempt after a 7 minute long fight, although it wasn't that smooth I did actually get hit and decided to check my HP in meta afterwards. Alright, let's see how much HP we're on. Oh, it's actually 1 HP! Let's go dude, insane. Killing the Rotten gave us enough for 6 more levels of Vigor, which is a good chunk on the way to our 50 Vigor target. The rest of the route is kind of restricted for a while now since I can't get to Old Iron King until I get past Mitha, and Mitha is locked behind the torch after Congregation, which in turn is locked behind Najka. So off we go to Najka. Uh, you have a very hard name to pronounce. A weak gap zag lady. Sorry if I butchered your name, which I probably did. Way to Nashka doesn't really have anything interesting. Usually you would go and pick up the Clomothy plus one ring, which is quite a nice boost to your endurance. That's standard rubbish, so I'm just gonna run through this entire area and go straight for the fight. The Nashka fight is kind of similar to the Rotten in that I'm usually not too scared of this fight. She's another boss which is fairly strong against strike, so my damage will be a bit lower. But it's quite a slow fight and I'm pretty comfortable dodging all of the attacks. The one that I'm most scared of is the Soul Mass because if you get caught too close to her, it can be really difficult to dodge it. One thing that I'll be trying to do during this fight is to ride on top of Nazca and break her AI. This will probably reduce my overall DPS, but it's a much safer way to do the fight, so I won't need to rely on any healing, which I don't have. I gotta say, this part was some BS. I've never actually seen her get out of this AI break once she's got it set up. The only thing I can think of here is that she had pre-planned a burrow and was too close to the wall to do a burrow. So I had to sidestep and then this knocked me off. I shouldn't have hit, got hit by that tail earlier. Good attempt. Clearly our Lucilla in good spirits from just defeating the Rotten, and this first attempt went really well. I got her far enough down that I'm pretty sure I can defeat her in the next couple of attempts.
Thankfully, I do manage to get onto her back during the second attempt, which nets me a lot of free damage. It looks like she can actually try and get you off. It's probably a positional error. If you go too far back on her tail, she'll do an attack. I managed to balance on the first one, but eventually she pushes me off. It's not really too much of an issue though. We've got a lot of damage in and we just need to finish off the fight normally now. We finished off Najka in satisfying style after about a 7 minute long fight and a total of 7 burrows. The souls from Najka are going towards some more levels of vigor, and the remaining souls after spending that I've actually used on buying the 3.5k ladder from Gilligan. I'm going to choose to go down and open up the mini wraps bonfire. I don't actually plan on doing the mini wraps fight, but if I'm really low on souls later on, which it looks like I'm probably going to be, then I can come back here and maybe do the mini rats fight. It's another fight that I don't really want to do, but it might be a better alternative for farming than other things in the future. Surely this isn't just an excuse to avoid doing the congregation fight. Alright, well, this next fight's gonna be sh. I should have got Gavlan here. I spoke to him, then I could have come and sold things more easily. I should go do that. Looking back, it seems reasonable to have gotten Gavlan here, but then again, I did not go and sell any rubbish to him for the entire rest of the run, so I don't think it mattered too much. I decided to go and check out how many souls you get for killing an Invis Hollow at this point. They only have one HP, so they're always going to die in one hit, and I'm always looking for more ways to collect souls. Getting to Congregation was a little bit annoying because of this door that you have to open. It's surrounded by hollows guarding it and I don't really want to kill them and I don't have any skulls. One of the main concerns in this fight is that the priest can heal the other enemies, so if you don't have enough DPS to kill the enemy and they decide to heal him then you're kind of stuck. So this fight does have a DPS aspect to it, as well as being a multi-enemy fight I was definitely not expecting this one to go very well. That said, I have done pretty hard challenges at Congregation before, so I had some experience, and this is what I thought going into the fight. And I've said many times before, this fight is often not very easy in challenge runs, and I suspect it will be the same here. So the annoying trick to this fight is to kill the small hollows first, which you generally don't do, but... Wait. I see if I have enough to kill this guy. No. If I can kill one of them, it'd be way better. The first fight was just used to test out what the damage was going to be like. Whether we wanted to go for backstabs or R2s and seeing how many hits it was to poise break the enemies. And how much their buffs affected the damage values, everything like that. God, that's so strong. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to be on this fight for a while, so get comfy. I need to, like, learn a strategy here. I might go get a beer, actually. Over the course of the next few fights, I realised that what I'd said originally about going for the small hollows first is actually probably the right thing to do. When I'm running around, I'll try and get as much damage on pretty much anything that I can for free, similar to Skelly Lords. There's a few differences to Skelly Lords though, mainly it's not as easy to stagger the smaller hollows, and the range attacks from the priests are a lot more dangerous than the range attacks from the Skeleton Lords were.
I had a fifth fight or so, we'd got quite a lot of stuff figured out. Firstly, I wasn't really going for backstabs on the normal hollows very often, because you're not completely invulnerable and you actually take chip damage from the mages which you can never heal back. Secondly, I need to give a lot more respect to the buff that the mages give out. It's a really strong buff and I need to prioritise killing the enemies which are unbuffed as soon as possible. And finally, something which I figured out during this run, or at least realised for the first time, is that if you don't do any damage at all to the mages, then they never seem to use their heal spell, which means that you can take your time and play much safer on the small hollows, and not have to risk that they're going to get healed back up to full. The fight is now down to three main phases. Phase one is to kill the standing hollows without trading too much health. This will free up a lot more space in the arena and slow down the fight. Phase two is then to kill Magus and the crawlers. It doesn't really matter which order you do this in, it's just a case of finding free damage, or taking whatever you can. Finally, phase three is to kill the two standing mages. This part is quite hard because you need to kill them before they heal each other back up. An important aspect of phase 3 is that you want to be dealing damage to them when they're not buffed, because you want to get them down as fast as you can so that they don't heal back up, and when they're buffed you really don't do enough damage to them. So it's a case of waiting for the buff to run out and then trying to kill them before they heal or rebuff. In this case the timing happened to come out perfect for me in this fight, so really happy with how this turned out. Thankfully we have just about high enough DPS to do this, and the rest of the fight is trivial, you can just unlock the final mage. And we make it past Congregation on the 8th try after an almost exactly 10 minute long fight. The reward you get for the Congregation is only 7000 souls, which is terrible, so I'm not actually sure we got a single level from this, but it's still progression. So we've defeated Congregation now and we have a couple of choices as to where to go. Either we go for Mitha or we go for Freya. At the end of the day I will need to beat Freya and Old Iron King to progress. So it doesn't really matter which order I do this in. I'm just trying to do the easy things first so that I get a bit more levels for anything later on. Defeating Congregation has opened up the second item of the game which is a torch. And we go and pick it up, although we can't actually get back to the bonfire, so I end up doing a death warp, get back, and go towards Mitha. As with everything in this run, even simple tasks like burning the windmill become quite difficult. I know you can just YOLO it, but I'm being really safe, because if I keep YOLOing it and my torch actually runs out, then I'm going to be soft locked. So I'm trying to only light the torch when I'm really sure I can actually burn the windmill successfully. Okay, what about get them down here? Come on, pull down. This plan actually did work, but when I got back to the bonfire, instead of lighting the torch, I rested. As I'm so used to doing that in this run, it's my only means of healing. But these enemies respawned, and then I had to do it again. But we got there on the next attempt. On the way to the next bonfire, we actually get a sneak preview of what my predictions were for what were going to be the hardest fights in this run. I think it's going to be quite fun looking back at the end of all the episodes and seeing how it compared. Myth is going to be quite a hard fight. She can also heal, unfortunately. Prey is also going to be a hard fight. Then Dragon Riders are going to be a hard fight. Mirror Knight's going to be a hard fight. Demon of Song I'm not worried about, but... Velstar, honestly, I'm not that worried about either. Or Giant Lord. A lot of Mythos attacks can be a bit annoying to roll on very long fights where you have to dodge them a lot. 
and especially when you have low ADP. But the one that I'm most scared of is the Splinter Wen. It's not difficult to dodge it when you're at range, but when you're at range you can't do any damage. So you want to be close to her and then you need to be in this awkward mid middle ground stance where you can dodge the spin to win if it happens and yet you can still do damage to her when it doesn't. For the rest of the fight my main strategy is to just chuck the tail early so that I don't get caught in some tail swipe attacks by accident and then just slowly whittle her down. It's a bit of an issue if she goes and heals in the poison because the fight's very long and if she heals for like a third of her HP bar it's just extending it by quite a long time and there's really nothing I can do about that. Okay I'm coming in here as a future hindsight pseudo and I'm very glad I didn't come up with this one before but I uh, just had a thought that maybe it is in fact possible to do Mitha in the poison. I just booted up my safe owl and there's a few tiles at the edge of the arena where you don't get poisoned. So theoretically, although practically not possible, you could stand at the edge of the arena and just dodge attacks. And I think if she does the AoE you can like run away and run back and maybe not get poisoned. So if anyone wants to one-up me on this challenge then uh, here's your chance. The Mytha fight ended up not being nearly as bad as I expected, although I nearly choked at the end there, that was pretty scary. We got through Mytha on the second attempt after a 6 minute long fight. These souls get us up to 46 figure, so nearly getting there. And I go back and spend these souls immediately because I suspect that I will be dying to Iron Keep. Next I decide to go for Old Iron King, I think the fight will be fine if I can get there. But the real challenge is going to be getting through Iron Keep with just my fists. The strategy for Iron Keep is going to be incremental progress. I can't heal anywhere, so the aim is to just go forwards, unlock a door or lever or something, or learn something, and then I can die and try again next time with more information. We're just going to try and keep inching closer and closer to getting to Old Iron King. I would love to take a closer bonfire here, but unfortunately the two options are not available. I don't think it's possible to get past Smelter Demon in order to take that one, and it's impossible to get to Belfry Soul because there are no Feral Slot Stones in this mod. I'll leave some live footage of the gauntlet that is Iron Keep and what the phases are that we need to get through. But just note that there would usually be two enemies on this bridge if we were coming from Smelter Demon, but apparently there's only one if you come from the start of Iron Keep. Okay, all part of the plan. The master plan. I've got to not get shot on this ladder. Cool. Game, please. Okay, we're going to juke this guy. Oh, the jukes.
The old Iron King fight was never going to be too concerning. I expected to get through this on my first or second attempt, to be honest. Because, as you're probably realizing, we're passing by now. This is quite a slow fight. It's not a multi-enemy fight, so I don't need to trade hits anywhere. There's not really any risk of getting hit because you can dodge all of his attacks without rolling, so ADP is not a problem. And there's no weird environmental effects like Mitha that are going on. So this is just going to be a case of dodge, hit, rinse, repeat. The fight itself is honestly pretty uninteresting. It goes on for quite a while, you just do the same thing over and over again. I did eventually get hit by doing the flare laser strafe, which honestly is quite unnecessary in this category, but you gotta keep it interesting somehow. The game was actually really kind to me in this fight for some reason. Old Iron King didn't end up teleporting to a new location at all. I'm not really sure why this happens, because the fight was definitely long enough for it to happen. But either way, I don't mind because this is the best place to fight him and you can just hide behind the wall. But if anyone does know what the actual trigger is causing him to teleport, I would definitely be interested in knowing because it's had an effect on other challenge runs in the past. Let's try baby, that was really nice RNG from that guy. Get through Old Iron King on the first attempt after an 8 minute long fight. Honestly, this was one of the cleanest proper fights of the entire run, so really happy with this. After defeating Old Iron King, we take the third Primal Bonfire, meaning the only one left is Freya. Going back to spend the souls, we do hit the 50 Vigor objective, which we've been working on for quite some time now. Uh, this is a pretty hard cap, so I'm not going to go above this, as you only get about 5 HP per level, which would be halved, so not really that good. Instead, I need to choose a new stat to start working on. It takes so long to level any of these up seriously, so I really need to choose one well ahead of time. After a bit of consideration, I thought ADP would probably be the most useful for the most number of fights, and specifically at this point I'm getting a bit worried about Mirror Knight, where I know it's going to be a long fight and the ADP would be really useful. Going into Freya, I was still somewhat optimistic that the fight wouldn't be that bad, but quickly my hopes got shot. Uh, how am I going to do this? Okay, let's just YOLO this, I guess. I guess not. Let's try a different shot. Oh, you're full. Oh, man. Damn. It doesn't take long to realize that this is going to be pretty bad. Multi-enemy fights are never good, and these spiders do a lot of damage, and they're pretty hard to hit. Obviously, for the fight, just killing them once isn't going to be enough either because they respawn on a timer, but that implies that we can actually get to the fight, which is much more difficult than it sounds. So apologies to anyone who doesn't like spiders, I don't particularly like them either, but unfortunately we are here for a while. If you don't want to watch, then just know, I eventually get my sweet revenge. It's hard to know how to edit this part as a montage. The main limiting factor is not really the amount of deaths, but how much time I'm willing to put in to edit them together. But I'll pop back in every now and again and add to the mini progression sheet that we're working on as we go through. Ridiculous. The problem is the fight's too long, I can't afford to get hit at all. Like, 
It's not like I can just only attack that hit. I can't take any hits. So if there's one attack that's going to kill me, I can't do the fight, because I'll just die. I hate this attack. Maybe I should actually, like, start killing these. See if I can res if I can despawn, like, some of them. It'll make my life a bit easier, I guess. Extremely loud, I'm sorry. What is hitting me, dude? Noise is going to be okay. I think this might actually be strats, though. I could despawn all of these in like ten minutes if this kills them. taking more damage than I am. Okay, I think that counts. I'm not certain though. I hate these enemies. They're so dumb. And if something dies every time, then eventually things will do spawn. Okay, let's see if I can kill this guy. So he just missed on that attack. about how I expected the fight to go. That full clock? I'm not gonna go for it because I wanna save these souls. If I can do like one more full clear and get a level of ADP, I'll be happy. Although I don't know if my children will go up. Yeah, so that, that attack does miss if you just run at them. 
which is really good news. I mean, I don't have much of a strategy, but that's like the start of a strategy. Should be number two. Oh, he's gone. Let's go. Yeah, hour and a half task of despawning the route to Freya. It's complete. I just can't fight groups of them. I just need to be patient in that situation. That's nice, Tyler. Thanks. Forgot about that. It's good strats. No, no, I was doing so well. Okay, get over there, spider. I'm hoping this doesn't hit me. All right, we killed the spiders. Now she's going to start spawning more spiders. That was a really good attempt. That was my best attempt yet. I don't think I actually need to kill all of them. So, over the many resets in the last few hours, I have been developing a strategy for the Freya fight. A lot of it comes down to how the mini spiders AI work, which seems to be broadly separable into four main categories. The first one is where they are not aggroed and they just kind of hide underneath Freya's body. And then the second one is they're not really aggroed, but they seem to be on like a random walk or just aimlessly wander around in some random direction. These ones are kind of annoying because they can get stuck at the other side of Freya's head, so you can't do any damage until you kill them. But they are pretty easy to kill because they don't really have much purpose. And you've got the third kind, which I'm not even sure is a real kind of type of AI. Basically, they are aggroed to you, and if you walk past them, they will attack. And they will try and get towards you pretty slowly, but they're overall not that concerning. And lastly, you have the concerning fourth AI, which I've probably called various things throughout this video, but something like the YOLO AI or the Mega Angry AI or something like this. And you can tell if a spider is doing this because their run speed is so much faster and they just chase you down at all costs. So initially I thought this was really bad and they are definitely the most concerning. But because they, they charge you without you doing anything, what you can do is you can go and get some space after like a laser or something and then you can wait for them to attack and then kill them. So although they are the most scary, you do have the advantage that at least they will attack you 
so you can prepare for it a bit better and get a better angle on the strafe. So the strategy we've developed is as follows. We go into the fight and then we go to the right and we kill the spider, which we should be able to do every time. Then we run around for a while and see if we have any mega aggro spiders. If we do, it should only be one of them and we can kill it. And if not, then we just go for damage on Freya. Generally, I'm going to leave the other spiders alive to just derp around because I don't want to waste time killing them because the longer I take to damage down Freya, the more likely I am for their AIs to just change or for new spiders to spawn with the bad AI. So it's a bit of a balance between killing the lone spiders if you can or going for damage on Freya. And I never end up really choosing to do one or the other. It's kind of a, just a dynamic decision as we go through the fight. When the aggro spiders do spawn, the trick is to bait a laser or some long range attack and then let them come to you and attack and then kill them. You really want to get them down as fast as you can and you really do not want to have to fight more than one of them because you pretty much end up trading every time. So overall, the fight becomes a game of making sure you're aware of how many aggro spiders there are and killing them as soon as you can. And when things are calm, you go and try and hit Freya. Then you just need to pray that you have enough health remaining after any trades with the small spiders that you can get Freya killed. It's like five more hits. Oh no. Okay, let, let them group back up. I'll see if there's any angry ones, which it looks like there's not, possibly. They're kind of like all over the place. This is good. No, you idiot. Uh, I went for it. No, I have an angry one. No! No! <laughs> I'm just gonna survive, dude. I need to survive like two more seconds. <laughs> 